Hiya, and uh, welcome to a, a new project. Um, now, we've actually had several boxes of Flames of War um, around the house since 2011. Um, we've never actually got around to actually as assembling most of them and painting them. <coughs> and this is what uh, this next video project is going to be. Um, just decided that after doing some paint playing around with some bolt action, I'm going, yeah, bolt action's kind of cool, but we already have a... Uh, I worked some World War II army, so let's let's actually build them and actually get this done and get into to Flames of War. Because if we we basically, as you can tell by all the Shermans, we decided to focus on the uh, the Normandy beaches um, as an as an area that we wanted to, to explore, Lake War. Um, but with bolt action, we're actually thinking of going more towards the Pacific. So, uh, but still. One of the things we found the most crippling, actually, is just, just trying to get the colour schemes right. And in the end, I've, I'm going to basically go, bugger this, I'm just going to do what... I'm just going to do, paint them up. Uh, not necessarily go tremendously for historical accuracy, but just they just kind of need, need painting. Um, as you saw from the uh, stug that I painted, which in a kind of Americanish colour, green with a bit of mottling and stuff, I went, actually that, that doesn't look too bad. Um, and again I kind of use I use it like a warpstone green colour for the for the American troops there. And that that worked quite well and I'm just going like just just do it Mike. It's it's you can't sit paralyzed not painting these things for years on end. You know, half a lot of these are, are like a is an early um What's it called? Open fire box set. So you used to you'd get about three Shermans, three Shermans, and two Stugs, and obviously cameras collecting the, the German army. And we got two of those boxes, and then we got one of the the more recent one with the the new rolls and things. So that's why we've got some fireflies in there. And yeah, we just really want to get these painted. So we've got Shermans galore. I'm not even going to count. I think we. There's something like 16, 17, 18 Shermans of, of various descriptions. I've got five half tracks in here. You can tell I'm going for a, more of a, an armoured company. Although I've got a, a complete rifle company here. And. Uh, armoured platoon, which is where the half tracks come from. I have picked up bits as I've seen them on sale around. So we have a assault platoon, a bazooka team, uh, three inch guns, and an aircraft. Which should make quite a sizable army. Uh, and that's probably part of the problem. It's become slightly intimidating to actually get started on this. But we're gonna make a start right now. We're gonna start by uh, using a spray paint to spray paint these things, undercoat them black. And then we're going to work from there. Okay, this is stage one done. Well, stage one of many, many stages, actually, funnily enough. Um, what I've done is I've taken all the tanks. And uh, what I you can see here, actually, and I've started with the, um, the box set figures as well. I, what I did was I spray painted them all, base coated them black. And I've been applying these, needed about two layers of um, Warpstone Glow, which is a, a, a green, a good solid green. Um, they look a bit too um, too much like the grit kind of green you use for army, army men, as in, you know, the toy soldiers. Uh, but I'm going to kind of like dirty it up and, and that, that'll just be, it'll just be what it is. Um, pretty good. One th concession I have made, because I don't really like uh, the these a lot of these machine guns, for instance, were on a little small pintles, um, and I've cut cut it cut it cleaner, cut it off, and kind of like glued it on, lowered it down so that it's a bit more robust, so it can't snap off. Um, that's just to to make the the models a little bit more practical. Um, yeah, they're all just two coats of green. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of go through things. Of course, what's interesting is when I do Space Marines, um, for, typically I'll make the weapons like a, 
a silver, but yeah, the um, most of the weapons on this, uh, the, you know, the big turrets, for instance, really were green. They were because they were painted, and a lot of a lot of the detail that you think you'd you'd do different color was actually painted green. You know, hatches, everything else. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to use our old friend um, bolt gun metal, which is like a, a big silver silver thing for the for some of the machine guns, some of the metal works for general weathering on it, and tire tracks as well. And then there's bits of stowage that I'm going to probably use a bane, br bane, braid, bane blade brown on. And also some a bit of brown for various um, various pieces on it. And that, I think, will be that. I will then put a wash on it. And then some of the... Uh, use kind of a scorched, dry, scorched death dry brush. And then a little bit of um, highlighting with the bolt, bolt gun as well to show weathering, weathering and stuff. And that will probably be good enough. Uh, if it isn't, I'll have to start all over. I mean, I was half tempted because, you know, to try and use some of the Warboss green because that's, that's more of an olive color, yeah? But it kind of looks a little, doesn't quite work. I suppose I could try using just a tiny layer of that dry brushed on top of it, but it just looks too kind of luminous to really work. Anyway, we'll give it a whirl. So this is where I'm at after about a week. I have a squadron of 19 Shermans, two fly high flies and five um, armor transports pretty much ready. Uh, I think I'm gonna work on, and um, basically what I've done, that's nicely. Um, Painted, painted the guys in the top. Uh, I used a green and a lighter green on top. Uh, then use like a null oil wash and then a bit of dry brushing with brown to kind of make it look, look dirty. It's looking pretty good actually. Pretty good. You've got to love the British fly, Firefly. Um, just put a really big gun. <laughs> Um, so that, that's good. One thing I'm going to work on next is I've got, um, I'm going to try and assemble these three inch guns and I've got an airplane as well. And I'm going to try and, try and work on assembling some infantry as well. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so um, obviously the tanks were, uh, are all done. Um, now finished off the rest of the open fire box set. Um, so that I've managed to do the infantry. Been a bit of an experimentation. I'll just show you kind of a little bit of a couple of the stages. Um, I'll, I've, I'm like spraying uh, the sprues black to start with, and then I'm, I'm kind of layering my paints on. Um, and then actually, what I did with these guys is I actually started kind of painting the flesh. Um, I, I'm doing the trousers a slightly different color. Do I want a different? Let's try and see if I can get, get this guy in focus. Nope, not gonna happen. Um, oh, now it's in focus. Um, too close, Mike. Uh, I, I'm, if you actually, if, I, if you look. Okay, and get in focus. One of the problems with them being 50 millimeters, uh, figures, hey, look at that, um, is the fact that you've got a, that much tinier to get get up close to. So I've kind of done, uh, obviously, green coat, uh, a kind of what's called bane bane blade brown for the trousers, and then like brown proper brown boots, um, like a metallic for the for the rifles skin. Uh, <clears throat> what I've done is. Is I painted on the sprue, assembled them, and then kind of just gone gone over with a, a very small brush to just fill in the you know fill in the bits that you don't quite get the first time round, and it, it worked quite well. They they don't look particularly great up close. But you can't get that that far up close. Um, most yeah, I think one of the things I'm trying to accept is most of the time when you play war games, this is as close as you get 
to your figures, yeah? So there's no point getting, doing too detailed, um, doing too much detail for stuff that you're never really gonna see if it, if that level of detail means that you never really finish your army. Um, got a friend at a local games workshop uh, club and he's uh, he actually owns a full chapter of Space Marines, that's a thousand Space Marines. And he's admitted that he wishes, kind of wishes he hadn't, because in they're all most of them are in boxes. Some are assembled, some are base coated. Um, but yeah, actually getting them playable, desktop playable, uh, that's a bit of a bit of a challenge. Now from here on, uh, that was about a couple of hours work and it was was quite a lot of fun. Um, as ever, I am using my Audible account to kind of keep me sane and kind of working my way through D-Day, which is obviously uh, a book on D-Day that's written by the same guy who did um, Band of Brothers. So it's obviously quite put me in the mood. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really good. I'm going through also the book for this and kind of like seeing, you know, do I need something else? Do I need anything else? Um, this is This actually can be... By the time I've finished all the boxes I've got, all the boxes of infantry, um, I'll be able to do this company several different types of way as either an infantry company with, with armour support or an armoured company with in infantry support, which is pretty good. Um, that's it for now. And more updates to come. And here we are after week two. Um, so what, what can I tell you about week two? Well, basically, week two has been concentrating on the infantry. Um, if I can just... They've actually come out quite quite good. I'm actually quite pleased with what I've done. Um, I think in the last video, I managed to... I just uh, finished the basic um, troops that you got with the open fire. And this represents... What does it represent, Michael? It represents um, a plastic rifle company. Um, I've also got the lightning painted as well. One thing I need to try and work out today, I've never done this before, uh, but there's the, like decals, the, um, the the white star that you get on vehicles. You can see, see it there. Try and put some of them on, on here at some point. That's probably gonna be the last thing I need to do. Um, I'm going through the rules as well, and, and there's something called makeshift armor that you can put on on them. Uh, when you basically a bit like this, you put tank treads and things on. Um, I'd like to do that to a few of a few of these, and I've, I've certainly got the bits lying around. But at the minute, I'm just really just trying to get through actually building them. Um, this is, I think, this is pretty a pretty good army, probably more than I could ever field. Um, but with enough art, I want, I kind of wanted to get enough so that I could could field a tank unit with some infantry support, or I could field a, an infantry unit with some tank tank support. So go either way. Uh, that's gone quite well. Uh, I've also I also picked these up from a local game store. Uh, that not got loads of um, claims of war, unfortunately. So a friend of mine is saying actually, Mike. You're just getting on top of uh, Flames of War as everyone is pretty much <laughs> shifting to bolt action, which is true. Um, I think as I said before, um, we were looking at bolt action and then we realised, you know, we, we've had these this army for like four or five years. It's time to really get on top of it and get it done. Um, and it's virtually done. I've actually really quite enjoyed uh, making these these things. I've left all the metal figures to last. I expected to be blown away by the plastics and go, you wouldn't really want to bother with the metals. In actual fact, what I found is the plastics are incredibly brittle and a bit of a pain. You literally just drop one on the floor and it's broken. Yeah, irredeemably. And I know most, most models are, but I guess that's what one of the appeals for me for um, Space Marines. Space Marines are quite robust figures that, that do bounce when dropped. Um, 
there are other kinds that aren't quite so robust. Um, I'll build the, the metal figures and see how they go. I've, you know, I've probably got eh, probably about that box box worth of just the metals, um, which I think will will be pretty fantastic. Um, probably as again mentioned, give me more, way more than I need to. I would really love to put the decals on these just to finish them off and make them look look good. I'm kind of reading through the Flames of War book at the minute and uh, just kind of trying to get used to what I can feel and what I can't feel. I've kind of just bought semi-randomly anything late American and hope I can knit it together as an army, which isn't necessarily the greatest, smartest way of doing it, but um, I've enjoyed it. I can't wait to actually play the game. It's been five years coming. It's about time. Anyway, so more progress, hopefully. Coming soon. Okay, guys, time for the big reveal. Are we ready for this? Well, this is quite exciting. This is the finished army. And, uh, quite, yeah, Flames of War style, that's a, that's a huge army. In fact, having assembled it, I do kind of realize I kind of we kind of wanted to get enough so that I had, could use a tank company, but also an infantry, a tank company with infantry support, or an infantry company with um, tank support, um, and probably have ended up collecting just a few too many tanks. Um, but yeah, it it looks it's actually been really fun. Um, <laughs> um, I've used this this stuff. You can probably just see. Take this off. It's uh, for, for my basing. It's, it's a, a real great kind of flock material, and I based everyone up and went, "Oh my god, everyone looks awesome!" And then I paint, then I flock them, and immediately it became apparent that, that everyone kind of became invisible. Um, the, 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 these guys are so so well camouflaged. <laughs> um, in actual fact, from the Part of me wonders, from a gaming perspective, yes, it would be nicer to have had some contrast between the base and the figures, so that can they're a bit easier to see what I've got. But it's 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 funny how well camouflaged they are. If you remember, I didn't go with a, a real um, American color scheme, not as religiously as Cameron is with his his German army, and he's taking some time to, to get through it. But I went, um, no, no, look, I'll go for a kind of greenish. Something that I think looks about right. Believe me, if somebody brings out a uh, a American um, color chart, they'll probably go, "He's not quite right." Well, I, I wasn't going for right. I was going for for just getting them done. Um, but yeah, you soon realise how many you've collected and going. Well, actually, maybe this is more than I actually needed. Um, over there, there's there's my air, airplane. I think the airplane is going to be an essential of this. But yeah, a nice sized uh, late American army. <laughs> we got quite a few bit through and went. We've been uh, going through some history and I've almost finished the D-Day book that I was going through. And going, well, why did I go with Americans? Because when you look at the armies, in actual fact, because uh, the Americans pretty much only have Shermans. That They're all Shermans. Uh, they are... Some Stuarts at the front, some half tracks, and then a few more Shermans and Fireflies. Um, by far, the British have got a more interesting mix of uh, of tanks, particularly late 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 war. They've got things like the Comet, which are which are, are really quite a, look a really fun tank to be honest. I'd like to be. They've got the slow Churchills, but who are quite heavily armoured, um, and you know, and they've got of course the the awesome firepower, if you look there, of the firefly, fireflies, because Americans aren't really powerful. But that was a that's was a I'm trying to remember what it was, something like a seventy six millimeter gun. But it, yeah, it, it, it basically had more more chance of penetrating German armor. Um, but th this looks really good. I can't wait to play it. Come, well, I'm going to have to. Oh, yeah, it's just a couple of. Anti-tank guns again, which very well camouflaged. You can just about see the guys in there. But it, it does actually look really good. Um, 
I can't wait to get played. I'm just you know, giving Cameron a nudge and saying, come on, my arm is done. What about yours? Um, I'm actually fi- trying to find out for some whether our local club is still playing late because uh, most clubs I know tend to play early or mid. One of the reasons that we went for the American Army is, of course, having having watched the Patton 360 uh, documentary series, most documentaries as well tend to be more centered more on uh, American experiences than British experiences. And, of course, Band of Brothers um, meant that we, we were a bit more familiar with America and kind of wanted to to maybe try and put that on the table, um, something we were a bit more familiar with over the over the British. And it's ironic, being British, that we are more familiar with um, some of, of what what happened with American experiences for war. Uh, but that's the way it is when, when the media is heavily more... Uh, you know, when they want to sell a film or a TV series, they try and sell the American experience for the American market um, quite heavily. It's, it's kind of unfortunate because the the kind of dry documentary series we get, we actually love the most is the ones that don't just take the American and British experiences, but we'll try and find some French experiences and some German experiences and some Russian experiences and try and get the full spectrum, you know, because, you know, even if you know, we we take take uh, take umbrage with the fact that usually it's just an American experience. But you know, just saying it's American and British experience is still only getting part of the story. It was a world war that involved many many countries, um, most heavily obviously Britain and Germany, who were in there for the duration. Um, but yeah. Getting every perspective is really important from a his, you know from history. History is is more than one side, and the worst kind of history tends to be when it is written only by one side. But uh, yep, well, we hope to be bringing a few sample games and uh, mocking up some experiences of of Normandy uh, before too long. Catch you later. And of course, the postscript is something I meant meant to uh, to talk about. Um, so this this wasn't too bad to paint it all up, but it did take a few weekends projects, which is which is, I suppose okay. But as ever with something like this, you you want to be in a rush to the finish. Yeah, uh, this hasn't been some of the best of my painting work. Um, but do you know what? As we said. The aim was to try and get things finished. Um, something I did just want to add on to the video was uh, what can only be described as pain fatigue. Um, when you are creating an army, starting from scratch, and I think that's the reason why this army has, has basically stayed in a box for as long as it has. Um, there's a sheer terror about getting started um, because probably... About a third of the way through, I completely lost enthusiasm for this. And I just got fed up of painting um, the tiny guys on sprues um, and sticking them on. And then knowing I still wasn't done, back to painting, back to painting, back to painting, back to painting. I just got fed up of it, absolutely fed up of it. Um, And then the last few bits of flocking... And then washes just seems to take forever. And finished everything I got, and then bought a pack of Stuarts because uh, at a, a games um, bring and buy sale, <sighs> which meant I felt further away from my my duration. It, overall, it was worth it. Heart, my I think my bigger big thing is is probably I needed half of this to field an army. And in fact, if you look at most of our, our armies, we've got quite large armies, so we can field large, a, a large amount of units and we can field lots of options. My Space Marines army, which is obviously my prime army, has a lot of figures in, involved in it, which means that I can, can field a lot and choose a lot of options for army. That means that for us, we tend to have to not not get involved in making in starting new armies because to field 1500 points we tend to collect 3000 points so we can choose lots of different options yeah uh, which is kind of a bit frustrating but it would be frustrating as well to have exactly 1500 points 
and I have to play exactly that army again and again and again and again and again. We like to be able to mix it up, try new things, um, but we probably overemphasize having a lot of options right from the off. Of course, it's, it's, it's always difficult when you go through any codex or army guide and you try and choose out the units you'd like to field as a thing because, of course, you'll play that, that thing and go, oh, this doesn't quite play as, as right, so therefore I want to take new things. One of the great things about having a large Space Marine, my large Space Marine army, it's all painted now and I'm on top of it, but for instance, my, uh, my bikes have been... Um, I didn't really get the point of bike bikes. I didn't like them. I took them to one game and the Chaos Lord appeared. Demon Prince, whatever they're called. You tell her and play Chaos. Um, and just pretty much slaughtered them all. I went, well, they suck. And I put them away for four years. And then this year I brought them out again and they played really well. In fact, in fact I've played them three times in, in tournaments because actually oh, they've got a bit more of a hang of how to use them. Don't charge at the, the Demon Prince. Keep a wide, wide berth. Just kind of run around and shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. But, uh, yes, fatigue. That awful, awful paint fatigue. Yeah. And in actual fact, right at the minute, I have painting fatigue with these guys. I so want to paint to, to, to play these Dark Elder. But I'm a bit strict with myself in the fact that I do not play um, unpainted figures or even base coated figures. I, I, I just, something in me, I just kind of want them finished. It's a good motivator to me. We were talking about this at Cafe War Games when we were at the Bring In Buy Sale. It's a good motivator for me because it means, oh, yeah, I really want to play something. Therefore, I go away and it, it incentivizes my. Uh, my painting to get through the painting so I know I can do this. I've got about 30 um, witches, I think, left to do. But I, I put a lot of effort into the Dark Elder and then all of a sudden I've gone, oh, I can't stand this. And I've created a lot of, of things to do rather than finish the Dark Elder. And in fact, technically, I've done this rather than finish the Dark Elder. Um, I think I've also done the the orcs that I've got here, rather than finish the Dark Elder. Um, I really want to play the Dark Elder, but we kind of, we bought the army off somebody and we've got to stick to their colour scheme, really, because it was half painted. But I really hate the colour, well, the colour scheme is quite, quite difficult. Now, funnily enough, what we've done is we've also got an, an Eldar army that's similar in a, well, it's in, it's in you know, a worse state of affair. And we basically went into our local games workshop and said to the guy, look, we've got a lot of, dark, of Elder to paint. Um, we're fin trying to finish a Dark Elder army and it's driving us nuts from the complexity. We want ideas for the simplest colour scheme that, that we can work just so we can get through these guys. And the guy's given us some really good advice, um, which we had to put into place, just so we can literally get through it all. Because that's what that's what's really needed. Um, this guy, um, he has basic. They've basically got a base coat. They've got a layer on top of that. Then they have a wash, and there's 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 the there's the orange. There's a, a kind of grey, and then there's a blue effect. And you've got to do all of them, and it just is time consuming. Very time consuming. So we hope to learn from that. Anyway, that addendum is done, and best get this put together and up on the web. Catch you later.